Examination of the hip by Mr Namandra Sandiford, Consultant Orthopaedic Surgeon at St George's Hospital. Before you start, remember to wash your hands and introduce yourself, obtain consent from the patient and ask if they have any pain. The basic principles of all orthopaedic examination are look, feel, move and then any special tests that are appropriate to that joint. On inspection, look for obvious asymmetry or deformity, carefully look for scars, try to assess the muscle bulk for wasting and look for any erythema. Palpate gently for deformity, tenderness for any swelling or any obvious changes in temperature. All movements are assessed both actively and passively and try to assess for any obvious weakness or pain and if you identify pain, ask about the location and the nature. Finally, consider any special tests that you may wish to perform, remembering that these are joint specific and based on your presumptive diagnosis. Don't simply rush into doing every test you've ever heard about. Examination of the patient starts with inspection and this starts with observing their gait for any evidence of abnormality including antalgia or obvious short leg. Inspection of the patient starts with the spine and then works down the legs. It is important to then inspect the footwear for any evidence of shoe or heel raises and to look round the room for any evidence of walking aids. Observe the patient for the level of the shoulders, of the pelvis and the knees as this gives a good indication of leg length inequality. Inspection of the patient starts in the lumbar region before moving on to the gluteal muscles, looking for wasting, scars, sinuses or fistulae. Uh, it is also then important to look for hamstring and quadriceps wasting before moving round to look for scars in the inguinal region. Palpation starts over the lumbar spine, followed by gentle percussion over the lumbar spine, then moving down to palpation over the sacroiliac joints, then round the iliac crest, over the greater trochanter, before moving on to the front of the hip and checking for a cough impulse, checking for hernia. Before placing the patient on the couch, it is worth checking for gluteal strength using the Trendelenburg test. Ask the patient to place their palms on your upturned palms and then to stand on one leg. When the muscles are good, they will not press down on your palms and be able to stand. If the muscles are weak, as on this right side, they will push down on your palm and the pelvis will tip to one side. Check that the patient is able to lie flat on the table and square up the pelvis. Then bring the medial malleoli together in the midline and this gives you a rough idea of leg length which you can measure later if you wish. Thomas's test is essentially a test for fixed flexion deformity. Place your hand under the small of the back and then ask the patient to flex up their knee as far as possible. This should leave the other leg flat on the table. If it does not, then they have a fixed flexion deformity of that hip. Range of motion is then assessed by taking the leg into full flexion and then taking it as far as the patient can tolerate. Internal and external rotation of the hip are then measured passively as demonstrated. Abduction is measured by placing a hand on the opposite anterior superior iliac spine and taking the leg sideways. A deduction is measured by swapping over to the ipsilateral asis and moving the leg across the midline. You may wish to consider some of the following special tests, but they are not usually expected of you at the undergraduate level. Another assessment of leg length inequality can be made using the Galeazzi test, where the ankles are brought together and the knees are brought together at 90 degrees. You then place one hand against the distal femurs, which will give you an idea of femoral inequality, and then a hand on the top of the knee, which will give you an idea of tibial inequality. 
Faber's test assesses the sacroiliac joint. Place the right ankle on the left knee and then stabilise the pelvis by putting a hand on the left anterior superiliac spine. There is then gentle pressure applied to the knee which stresses the sacroiliac joint. Labral tears in the hip can also be assessed using the flexion, circumduction, internal rotation test which reproduces pain if there is a labral tear. When you've finished your examination, remember to thank the patient, to ask to examine the joint above and below, to ask to check the neurovascular status, uh, consider whether you want any imaging, and remember to wash your hands before you go.